Hi and welcome to this Furuno Australia TZ Touch 3 MFD training video. Today in this video we're going to look at the DRS radars, what they look like, uh, what to interpret a, uh, the radar image uh, and also some specific functionalities and how to use them. So let's jump straight in. So on the display here we can see the Navnet TZ3 chart plotter uh, with the boat in the middle of the screen and the chart behind it. To activate the radar, we will tap on the home button up in the top left corner and then we'll go to radar. So again, top left corner we go to home and we go to radar. So what does a radar look like? So the DRS radars are generally the white dome that sits on top of the vessel uh, with Furuno written on the, on the front of the dome. Sometimes the DRS radars come in an open scanner format where it is a, a swinging bar that rotates around on top of the boat. The radar itself and how they work, they spin around and they send out a signal that reflects off other objects uh, like land, uh, it'll uh, bounce off vessels, other boats, beacons, uh, rain, it'll pick up rain squalls, um, and rain looks like a bit of a, a sprogly type dotty uh, echo, um, so pretty much anything that would reflect any sort of uh, radar echo will come back onto the radar display. So how to turn the radar on? So to transmit the radar, we've got to tap on the TX button, which is down in the bottom left of the display. So we tap on TX, and the radar will start spinning and start transmitting instantly. The DRS radars are a solid state Doppler type radar, so there's no warm up times really. They are a solid state, they don't require a magnetron, uh, they simply just transmit when you're ready to go. So here we have a radar, an echo. It is the orange type blobs that are around the boat. The boat is in the center of the screen, in the middle of these rings, uh, and the boat is facing up, basically. So normally with a radar, you would have it in heading up mode, so any objects that are in front of you uh, are up on the LCD display. You can see from the center of the boat, there is a bright green line, straight line that is heading up the uh, display. That is your heading line, so that is the direction in which the vessel is, is moving. To the starboard side of the vessel, you can see uh, it's um, a large echo. That is some landmass, so most likely landmass. Uh, then you've also got some dots in front of the vessel, some blobs. They are individual vessels or individual targets. And then on the side here, uh, you've got some more landmass. Rain again would show up as a, a type of sprogly type echo. You would see a large, you know, a, almost a large blob in a sense of the radar or storm moving through. How to use the radar? Generally, avoid the dots. Um, the dots are an object in front of you, so you want to go around the dots. So the functionality is on the display and how to zoom in and zoom out, um, tune the radar, etc. So it is a touchscreen, so again, your gestures will control the radar. So much like the chart plotter, you can pinch to zoom, to zoom in and zoom out, and the radar will change its range accordingly. So we zoom in and we zoom out. And north up, change back to north up, there we go. And so that's zoom in and zoom out. If you want to move the radar around, you can. There is uh, some flexibility there. If you wanted to look further in front of the boat without changing the range, you just drag your finger down the display and move the radar image around. If you wanted to look off to the starboard side, you can, without having to adjust the range of the radar. And to bring the boat back to the center, we tap on the center button. Radar tuning. So radars nowadays are pretty good at tuning themselves, and tuning involves giving you a clear echo, uh, defined targets, uh, whether you want to filter out rain or not, or keep them. Um, that is the tuning of the radar. And in a basic tuning sense, you've got gain and C and rain. Gain is the amplifier, so it makes more noise come up on the screen. And to adjust the gain, you've got the toolbar on the left-hand side here with your nav data, and you can see there, there's some controls with gain, C and rain. And how I adjust them is I'll simply tap on the gain and I can manually adjust the gain up and down. Because we're in demo mode, it's not going to take any effect. So you can see I'm just swiping my finger up and down and then once I'm finished setting my gain, I tap on done. Same thing with your C and rain. So C and rain are anti-clutter, so they'll remove the waves off the screen. Uh, they also remove the, the rain off the screen. And the more you use, the more it will remove. 
Bear in mind though that an echo is an echo. So if it's a, a target in the water uh, or a target that's in the uh, sea, a wave or anything, the radars don't necessarily distinguish between the two. An echo is an echo. So if you turn your sea up too much, you may miss some small targets. If you turn it down too low, you may get too many targets and not be able to distinguish between what is actually a physical object or what is just a wave moving through. If you'd like the radar to tune itself, you can set all of these into auto mode. To do that, you've got the M A, which is manual and auto. So if I want to go to the gain and make it auto, I just tap on auto and it adjusts its gain automatically and the same for your C and rain. So that in a sense is tuning the radar in a basic sense. There are more functions like echo stretch and echo averaging and that sort of thing. Um, but as a basic type uh, introductory type training video, um, that is the, the three main things you'll adjust is the gain, the C and the rain. If you're not 100% confident with it all the time, just leave them on auto until you get used to the radar image and then you can start using the C and the rain in the gain, gain settings. So, how to measure a distance and, and range and bearing. Uh, there are two ways. The first way is you simply tap on an object. So I'm tapping my finger on the object um, and I can get uh, a range and bearing of that object. So I tap my finger on the object and you can see range and bearing. Another way is if I have a, a mouse or a, a trackball or a joystick, a Furuno MCU joystick, um, you can use the cursor like I am at the moment and you can move your cursor anywhere and you'll see on the bottom left of the nav data display I have cursor information so wherever I put my cursor you can see a position, lat long, a bearing, a range and a time to go at your current speed to get to that object and there we go Acquiring ARPA. So ARPA stands for Automatic Radar Plotting Aid and ARPA will lock on to an object a target if you will and it will continue to track that target and give you a latin long give you its course and give you its heading etc to do that i just tap on an object and i go to acquire and with out a demo it will give you some arpa targets i'm just going to turn them on there and so you can see i've got a few here that the the demos is tracking so all of those green circles are arpa targets and they are target tracked using the radar only, so no AIS or anything else required. All the radar needs is your position and heading. If I want to investigate that type, that target and see what direction it's traveling in and see what speed it's doing, firstly you can look at the, the target icon itself where you'll see the ring and then there's a vector extending out from that target which is the dotted line. So you can see here uh, there's a few targets that are moving quicker and they have got vectors that are extended longer. So the faster the object is moving, the longer its vector will be. As opposed to, say, number 81 here, which is moving slowly, you can see that it is not moving very much at all, and it's got a, a shorter, much shorter vector. If you want to investigate the target even deeper, you can tap on that target, and you can go in down to Info, and the info will give you its ID, its course, its speed, its heading, its current uh, closest point of approach and its time to closest point of approach, range and bearing and if it's tracking and it's latin long. So that's your, your basic ARPA tracking. There is some further ARPA tracking with auto ARPA tracking, so using the Doppler and that means that if a target is moving towards you it will automatically start to track it, but I'll go through that in a, a, a different section of this video. The next is TLL, so Target Latitude Longitude. So if you wanted to drop a waypoint on a specific target, you can do that in the radar by tapping on the object and going New Point. And that will simply drop a waypoint on that target, which will then transpose over to the chart plotter display as well. So if I zoom out here, that is the waypoint that I put on the radar. And if I go to a split screen with radar and chart plotter, zoom out a bit, I can tap on an object and go new point, which is down the bottom of the menu. Ah, new point, sorry. And I've got waypoint 004, which is now over on this side here. 
So TLL is a target latitude and longitude and it allows you to uh, map out certain targets if you needed to. So say if it was a, a tree sticking out of the water that's always there, um, you could mark it with the radar and you can uh, mark on that spot and, and put a certain name and icon and, and mark it as, a, as a, a danger or something like that. And back to the radar. We also have a, a manual way of measuring a bearing and also a distance and that's called EBL and VRM. EBL stands for Electronic Bearing Line and VRM stands for Variable Range Marker. So I'll just remove some of this stuff to clean up the screen a bit. Okay, so if I wanted to measure the distance of these two targets which are out to our uh, port side, I could tap on the target and get a range and bearing, um, or I could have a, a range and, and uh, a bearing line to those objects. To do that, on the nav data pane on the left hand side, I've got a section that says EBL VRM. And I tap on that, and now I can extend out this EBL, so you can see the green dotted line that's moving around, simply dragging up and down to move it, and I can target onto that target there or I can tap on the individual target. So I'm simply just tapping on these targets and it gives me the, the bearing line straight to it. And once I've got my bearing, I go NBL and, and EBL. And now I want a variable range marker. So I tap on the VRM section. Once again, I can rotate it out. And you can see the dot where those two intercept. Or again, I can tap on the target and it will move it out. I can drag my finger and move the bearing line wherever I want it. And so if I wanted to have it at a certain range and bearing, that's done, I'm finished. So now once I hit VRM, that range and bearing marker will always be there and it will indicate a range and bearing on the radar at all times. If I want to clear it, I can go to EBL and clear and tap on the VRM and go clear and that removes them off the screen. So that's your EBL and VRM feature. The next feature is an advanced feature called Target Analyzer. So all the Furuno DRS NXT radars, so that's a DRS 4D NXT, DRS 6A NXT, anything with the NXT um, terminology is a solid state Doppler radar. And so because it's a, a Doppler radar, it means that it can detect if a target is moving towards you or away from you and give you a, a simple radar image to indicate that. So if you're coming into a very busy port at a very busy time, uh, maybe the weather isn't that great or maybe it's night time and you want a simple radar display to know if something's moving towards you or if it's static and moving away from you, therefore it's safe. To do that, we swipe up from the bottom, open up the layers menu and we tap on target. And once that's tapped, you can see the radar image changes now to green is safe and red is moving towards you at a relative speed greater than three knots. So that means that if you were heading towards a vessel and they were heading towards you, it would be red. If you are coming up behind a vessel and they were going slower and you were catching them and you're catching them at a rate greater than three knots, it'll be red. If there's a vessel behind you that's catching up to you, it will also go red. So any object that is moving towards you relatively at a speed greater than three knots will simply show up red. And so you can see here on this image that the land base or the land mass is green and the vessels in front of us are red. With this feature, you can also have auto ARPA acquisition using Doppler. And that means that any target that turns red will allow the radar to automatically track it as an ARPA target. So it will show up on your chart plotter. To do that, we can go into our settings. So our radar settings. And we can go down through the settings. And you'll see auto acquire by Doppler. Because it's on demo, I don't think it will do it, but we can try. But what you'll find is your automatic radar plotting, your ARPA, will come up immediately as soon as a, a target has gone red, which we can see these two up the top here have got ARPA targets as well against them. 
So that is a, an automatic feature that's offered by the DRS40 NXTs. Uh, it can be quite handy, especially if the, the helmsman or the, the navigator doesn't have the radar image on for a, a few minutes or forgot to turn it on. Um, you can have the radar always scanning and if anything moves towards you, it puts an ARPA target onto your chart plotter. And that's target analyzer. The other target analyzer is rain, so it will, um, this demo file won't, or this recording won't show rain, but if you do get rain, um, it will show up as blue. 